Well, it wasn't bad, but ultimately it was just a repeat of last episode with a slightly different, um, shake-up. You know, because, um, I thought that this time, for sure, that, um, the Red Tribe was going to lose, especially since there were some hints of strategy talking on that tribe, though really it was just, um, uh... Sandra and Tyson, and even then there really wasn't that much, um, spark between them, because it's Tyson going, you should probably think about Sandra here for a bit, and then Sandra's like, you come after me, I blah 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 blah, we've heard this before from Rob, a little bit from Tony, uh -huh. but now nah, it turns out Red Tribe is just barely able to he count that win and send Blue to, um, Tribal again. <laughs> so since the only other, um, thing on that, um, Red Tribe that happened was the, um, shark bit, <laughs> I gotta admit that was, um, pretty amusing. <laughs> I mean, like, who wouldn't be nervous about having a, uh, seemingly dormant shark suddenly start flailing around, and you gotta remember... Shark and fish, they don't actually have spines, so, uh, at least I'm pretty sure sharks don't have spines, so, their muscle contraction works, um, differently, so, I don't totally blame Tony for that, but, like, how he runs halfway up the beach, and you're like, no, 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 get in here, get in here, when he could have easily picked that dog chest up and brought it halfway to Tony, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that was um, rather amusing, and I think because of how these last couple episodes have been shaking up, I'm starting to suspect that um, the winner is actually going to be from the Red Tribe. Not that I'm complaining, it's just that I kind of wish it was just more even, you know, in terms of the edits, so that's why I wasn't being led to, to um, thinking this, because we've had a few seasons where we get um, a lot of camera time on one try because they're doing um, so badly, and yet the winner actually comes from the other tribe, because one very good argument for that is Palau, but it was a lot more even then than it is um, now. And then, um, you can make, um, a bit of an argument that, um, Cambodia was like that, because the first iterations of Takeo, eh, I mean, first and third iterations of Takeo didn't really win anything. They might have won one reward challenge apiece, not sure, but you had a lot focusing on those people for a while there, and then you had, uh, Steven on... The other tribes worrying about Joe, and then you had Jeremy trying to uh, make his um, alliances with people. That's really all you um, had, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I'm starting to think. Again, I'm not complaining, because I'm pretty certain that the end edit will um, justify a winner on the Red Tribe. I just wish it was more even. Okay. That, um, Chell, Lynch, um, I think Jeff seemed to be sort of complaining about how, um, Blue fell behind due to people falling off those platforms. Really? I think the only reason people fell off was because there were just too many of them trying to do it super quickly. It's not easy to leap backward and forward from those things. I've never done anything like that, but this is a, a challenge, not a, a challenge, um, task that comes from Ninja Warrior, and I've seen a little bit of that, and it's not easy to do that kind of thing, especially if there ends up being um, some kind of um, substance on the things. Dirt, sand, water in the case of Ninja Warrior, though that doesn't happen often, given how raised up they are, hmm? It, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's the same thing with, um, um, doing the human pyramid 
bit. Yeah, it's on a slanted surface, but you gotta remember... Tyson, Ben, and... Jeremy, they had to deal with grown people um, climbing on them and putting their own weights on them. Now, a lot of people, if they train hard enough, they can um, learn how to lift or support like a hundred pounds of weight, but you don't get there overnight. Hmm. But, right at the beginning of the win, congrats, and then we, um, get back to camp. So this time it seems to be um, pretty darn obvious that there's no workaround for um, Rob's group and that one of them is going to go but the weird thing is is that um, they never actually talked about voting on Rob directly whereas in the first episode they definitely did do that. Though I think Adam or Ben pointed out, we actually do need him. And that might have been a factor during last episode, don't um, remember. But they never directly brought it up here. And there was no reason for them not to. Sure, he's a whiz at puzzles, but clearly the other side is better at them. Hmm? Alright. Plus, if you put Rob on the edge, that, um, direct officially gets rid of the, um, power couple with him and Amber, because only one of them can get back in the game at one time, assuming that it really is two people coming back. We'll see. Just, it was just odd. Uh, now, floating around, um, getting rid of Parv, um, Adam and company, they do point out justifications for it, because this is exactly what was happening to her in HVV, and the fact that she has just the ability to make things work, not, um, get a target on her back, because for those of you who aren't keeping track, in every single one of her seasons, she only ends up with four total votes against her. Okay, okay, technically in HVV she had eight, but she negated well, Russell negated four of them when he played the idol for her and got Tyson to switch his vote. But, you know, four votes apiece over three seasons? That's really shocking, you know? Because it's really easy to get four votes in just one tribal for some people. But... Also, she's going to get more than that, but we'll see. She's already got two. Um, but yeah, I was totally expecting them to really go for around the her this time, especially since while people were floating Adam's name as a um, possibility, it just didn't feel right. Now, Jeremy and Denise, they both were like, geez, what is he doing? And even Rob and... Even they say the same thing. They're like, are you being stupid, Adam? You're telling me this much honesty? Now, granted, um, Adam is saying that he wants to work with Rob long term, but it seems to be more just for his game rather than his group. Whereas in this stage of the game, you really gotta focus on the group. But... Granted, he didn't um, really do that after the swap at Millennium's vs. Gen X, but there were only five people on that tribe, and the other four people were duos. So by default, you have to think about your own personal game. He had to. It's just odd. Uh, I definitely don't think that this is a good example of honesty paying off. I think this is honesty screwing him up and lowering his position within the group, because I don't think Ben is really a wild card anymore. I think that he's firmly with the Adam and Denise bit, though Adam has been kind of... Uh. And Jeremy, while he and Michelle do seem to be with those two, and Michelle actually got a confessional, thank you, I don't know if they're with them fully yet. I think they're doing that just to take out the power group and then create an even playing field and they're like, let's see what happens after this. 
we'll see how that um, goes, because I don't think they're fully together. I think it's just more coincidental fate that has put them in that situation. So going into Tribal, um, once again, I was thinking it would be Parv, because even though... Uh, um, 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 hold on. I'm trying to remember chronological order of events here. Yeah, I was thinking it would be Puff because of, I think, she got a confessional right before Tribal. Because before then I was like, yeah, you're talking about getting rid of her, but for someone who's going to get booted, she hasn't really spoken that much to the camera. And given how beloved Puff is, you don't want her to go without getting into her mind some what? So then she gets that confession, and I'm like, okay, that's a lot more justified. Adam, the seeds of distrust are there, and I don't think they're going away anytime soon, but don't see it. And I was a little surprised how it ended up being three votes Adam, one vote for Pav, but I'm like, okay, just throw the rest on um, Pav, because how on earth can this be unanimous to get rid of Adam? I just cannot see everyone doing that like this is seriously the um one in 16 chance that all the others go for adam don't see it well that's because they all got rid of ethan which was kind of surprising but the thing is i think i actually somewhat alluded to this because at the beginning, um, Adam was working on pulling in Ethan, so that way they had stronger numbers to get rid of, um, Rob or Parv. But, I guess the other group thought, well, we don't know who has the idol, and they're least suspecting us to go for Ethan. But also, if we get rid of Ethan, that puts us up five... Two, with Adam taking the heat for us, and... Rob and Pav have officially nowhere to hide, no one to vouch for. It's either they have to come after one of us, or so we finally get rid of them. So there's an argument to be made there. Sure, it's uh, a little different, because last time it was keep Rob and Pav thinking they're in control when they're not. Now it's eliminate the question marks from the deck, so that's why it's just straight up power duo versus everyone else. Hmm. But of course the big question is what's going to happen to Adam? Can he recover from this? Don't really um, think so, but why would they go for him next time? Uh, I uh, don't see that. You want to get rid of one of Rob or Pa first, definitely, and you should get rid of Rob. I mean, like, a lot of people say that Pa is a beast in the challenges, but as I've said before, she's won four individual immunities. You want to know how many Rob has won? Nine. Yeah. Well, eight, if you um, don't want to count the one that he got in um, HVV. Sure, Pa could have won some uh, reward challenges, uh along the way, but I don't think she's actually won that many, to be honest with you, because she placed in a challenge in Cook Islands. Uh, she was invited on a couple of... Uh, she won a team challenge in HVV, invited on the loved one visit with Sandra, Micronesia. Who Micronesia? I'm actually tempted to say that she didn't. Hmm, okay. Uh, Rob is the challenge beast here, not her. Come on, think, people, and... Although that would be interesting if she makes t it to the merge and wins another immunity, because then she will have finally broken the record of most immunities won by a woman, because... As I've said before... Consecutive immunity wins, non-consecutive wins, and returnee wins for women. All three of those are the same. Four. Hmm? I think it's time that we change that, although I think it's only Pav that can change that unless Michelle wins three. Because, like, who else is... 
there's one good amount of immunities. Having trouble thinking of them right now. Hmm. Okay, I think that this has gone on long enough, surprisingly. I thought this would be much shorter. <laughs> See ya.